You're on. Hello, everybody. I'm Dan. I'm Christina. I'm Brian. I'm Barry. And we became experts on Chapter 4, which was all about design. Now, I was going to tell you a story about Gordon McKenzie. You've already did that. So I'm going to go on a little bit of a tangent here. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, I actually volunteer at an elementary school in Baltimore. And this past week, we worked on topographical maps which I thought was a little weird, but the art teacher put a spin on it by having the children actually cut out shapes and piling them up on top of one another using little bits of cardboard in between so that they could actually create their own mountains, name them, and have them however tall they wanted to be, which I thought was much cooler than if they had just drawn it down on paper. So it kind of leads into the question that I'm going to ask, how many artists do we have in the room? Can you please raise your hand? All right, so maybe around 50%. So if Gordon McKenzie were here today, he would probably be moderately satisfied with that result. But he and the author would probably both assert that he would want everyone's hands to be raised, because that is the age we're moving into. It's a conceptual age. And what that essentially means is that it's a combination of utility and significance. Now. When you're producing a product, it's no longer sufficient to just have that minimalist expectation of functionality. You need to surpass that expectation by incorporating some sort of beauty or aesthetic appeal into your product. Now, the reason why this has become so important is because over time, with so much L-directed thinking, the utility aspect has lost value and has instead been replaced by significance. Now, a pretty good example of this is a charter high school of architecture and design based in Philadelphia. It's uh, nicknamed CHAD. And the way the author describes this is unlike the typical description of the classroom you would get. It's not students sitting at a desk taking notes while somebody presents up here. It's somebody posing up front while other students draw her and soft music is playing in the background. So it's very unique in that it's unlike any other schools in the Philadelphia area. When you walk through, you don't go through metal detectors. You walk in and see a mural on the wall. At Chad, the attendance rate is 95% as opposed to 63% at other Philadelphia area high schools. And it's not as if Chad is just all focused on art directed thinking and design. It's incorporating the English, math, and science together with the architecture and the he also gives one example when studying about the Romans, if they're looking at the Roman water supply, they don't just read about it, they actually build a model aqueduct. And essentially, as this quote describes, it produces people who can think holistically. They're very well-rounded, can think around the board. That's a quote from the woman who created the curriculum at the school. And we're seeing schools like this popping up all over the country, in New York and Philadelphia and D.C. And now, Christina's going to tell you a little bit more about practical applications of design in the real world. OK, so building off what he said, I read about the democracy of design. And basically, what it discusses is how the design of products is becoming more important than the actual use of the products themselves. So a long time ago, decades ago, only design was used for people with money, or like the elite, rich people, while standard people would mostly just use the the usage of the product itself. And we talked with, like last week in class about the trash cans and the toilet scrubbers. You could go on and talk about phones. This is old school phones, but nowadays we have the sleek phones. You can get all different colors and sizes and cases you can customize with phones. So this is the font test that we discussed in the book. And I'll just give you a second to kind of see if you guys can match these up. And this is a perfect example of the democracy of design, of how decades ago you couldn't really do this, but now we can choose what fonts we want. And when you had typewriters, you couldn't exactly do that. You had one font, it was standard, and it was unheard of to be able to choose what you want. It was easy. <laughs> so Target is a perfect example of this. They are mass merchandising high fashion products, and they have ads that show the high fashion products or family products. They advertise a $3 toddler cup next to 
really expensive watches. And even the government, they talked about in the book how they changed their thought from Courier Duke 12 to Times New Roman 14 in 2004. And that's a perfect example of how, like, why did they need to do that? You know, it's just all about modernizing. So the democracy of design has strongly impacted the way businesses compete with each other. Traditionally, businesses will compete on quality and price, but with the uh, increasingly competitive pricing systems and labor costs in the Far East, that has shifted to uh, more whims whimsy, beauty, and meaning. And one of the spokes former spokesperson from Sony says that uh, typically pricing, performance, features, and quality amongst products and businesses are essentially the same. So design is really what differentiates one product from another in the marketplace. And in the automobile industry, we see a pretty good example of this. GM, a few years back, decades back, was about to go under. And it was said that they spent too much time on engineering and crunching numbers. There were two left and they brought in Bob Lutz, who declared GM as not just an automobile manufacturer, but part of the art business. And similarly, BMW does not, in their own words, create automobiles, they create moving works of art that express the user's love for uh, high quality. And we also see in the kitchen, has anyone heard of Q-tensils? Other than from the book, like before the book, Q-tensils? Have you? Q-tensils are uh, forks, knives, and spoons that have like cute designs, or <laughs> sometimes they'll have googly eyes or whiskers, which I've never heard of. I actually want some. <laughs> um, and the toaster oven is another perfect example of Dan mentioned utility versus significance. So utility for a toaster oven is how much time you spend using it. So let's say we use a toaster oven for 15 minutes a day, which I think is a stretch. That 15 minutes is 1% of all the minutes of the day. So we have 1% utility value, 99% goes to significance, so why not make it look pretty? And Ralph Waldo Emerson said that if you build a better mousetrap, the whole world will not move forward. But Pink added, in a world of abundance, if the mousetrap doesn't appeal to the right side of the brain, nobody's going to die. Okay, so good design can change the world, but so can bad design. Uh, one thing that a hospital in Pittsburgh was analyzing is natural light versus ceiling light. And pa patients were 20% more likely to feel faster if they had natural light versus, versus like ceiling lights. And they also were released two days prior um, compared to other patients. And same things in school. So 11% of people have higher uh, great tests and stuff that they have naturally. Um, another way to look at design is the environmental aspect. So there's solar panels, wind panels, and or wind panels, and, um, water panels. And with the design, you can have environment, environmental impacts to help how our environment is because houses and buildings produce more uh, pollution than cars and factories. And another aspect of design is the 2000 um, presidential race for uh, Al Gore and George Bush. So this is an example of a ballot where it was the president's name and then there's a hole that could punch. And they weren't lined up properly, so they think that the way that the design worked is you were more likely to vote the wrong vote if you saw this ballot. And that's why they made George Bush one. So just based on the design, you can determine the outcome of something. And so you can skew whatever you want just based on how it's designed. 